Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. This is our third episode from the amazing islands of Orkney in Scotland, where, thanks to the drive and determination of some of the islanders, the foresight of the Scottish Government and the EU, EMEC, the European Marine Energy Centre, have created a world-leading test centre for all things tidal power. Now we've already covered an affordable housing estate on Orkney and the Surf and Turf project that both make very smart use of excess renewable electricity. This time we get up close with the innovative designs that are already helping to power those schemes, creating huge amounts of clean electricity and helping companies from all over the world test out their latest tidal power generating concepts. This could be a glimpse into the future of tidal power generation. So Danny, I've heard so much about tidal turbines, but I've, I, and I've seen them on dock sides, but I've never actually seen one in, in situ doing its job. It's really exciting. So tell me a bit about Scott Renewables. Are you totally focused on tidal turbines? Yeah. Is that right? So Scott Renewables um, was formed locally in about 2002. And from then uh, until well, 2003 to 2009, they developed scale models of floating tidal turbines. The company's ethos was to develop um, a turbine that has low maintenance costs and um, which resulted in a floating tidal right. turbine with retractable legs. Um, they developed their scale models all the way through um, until 2011 we launched the SR250, a 250 kilowatt device and that ran a successful test program here at EMEC. Right. <clears throat> and then last year we launched uh, the world's largest and most powerful tidal turbine, the SR2000, which has been going through operational trials and uh, generating here at the Falls of Warners. Right, so because what it looks like is a, like, a, it does look like a yellow submarine that's just come out of the water, hasn't it? Yeah. But, so that is a, what, how, what, how long is that? So it's, it's 64 metres long right. and it weighs about 505 tonnes roughly. Underneath the water, there's an awful lot you can't see here, yeah. um, but there's two huge uh, retractable legs um, with rotors on the end. So what the turbine does then is there's a modular gravity anchor system um, on the seabed and that's brought up into a turret that has the electricity uh, cable connection as well and the turbine can yaw into the tide. Oh, so the turbine just literally swings whichever way the tide's turning? Yeah, so we can see that now, we're at slack water here right. and um, we're just ending the flood tide and about to come under the ebb tide. So you, we can see the turbine's actually turning into, right. the, into the ebb tide. So, I mean, one of the advantages of tidal is, of course, you can predict when it's going to be generating and when it's going to be turning. Because, I mean, it's presumably tides are every 12 hours roughly aren't they? Yeah well you, when you look at the scales you can predict for I think it's just about 18 years or so uh, right. for, for how far you can predict right. um, which makes it quite useful yeah. for if you were feeding back to uh, electricity suppliers. Yeah. And then how much does that produce then? You know, in what, what's this it, device here now that's a two megawatt uh, device. Two megawatt, right. so, so that's like a one of the really big wind turbines isn't it? Yeah. It's, the equivalent. it's huge and the, the turbine hit uh, peak power a few weeks ago yeah. and it's been generating well here and the company is uh, slipping to do a press release soon to just announce how well it's right, been doing. Right, how much it's been doing. Yeah. That's fantastic. So I mean the potential for this, just this single site, you know, if, if the technology was deployed is colossal. I mean, it is. It's colossal, isn't it? It's fantastic. Isn't it's it? sort of, you know, it's multiple gigawatts you could do if you had a, you know, you've got one here that's doing two megawatts, but I mean, if you had a, a thousand, I don't think it would slow the tide somehow. No, <laughs> I don't. I don't think it would. And and ahead of this device as well, um, we're developing the engineers are developing a new turbine, a flow right. tech project as well. So. And so do you think you could go bigger? Though? Is that is that one of the plans that you it's, get bigger? And bigger it's not, it, it wouldn't be bigger. Two megawatts is. It's a sizable turbine, yeah. but we're still looking at reducing the levelised cost of electricity right. and making more ease of, ease of maintenance. Because is that one of the advantages of having a floating one is that you can you can do maintenance on it? I mean, I was, presumably even well, when it's just here, you don't need to necessarily take it into a dock. Completely. Installation costs as well as, right. as maintenance. We can take a team of guys out here um, on a rib and they can access the turbine to do any di diagnostics. Right. Um, and then you can tow it uh, on and off site with locally available workboats, multi-cap vessels. Right. Which so saves, saves the need for getting huge dynamic big cranes yeah. or something, yeah, yeah. But I'm assuming then if it's got really big arms down underneath the water with big rotors, you, you, you do need a very deep port or is there a... Well, no, the legs are retractable as well. So um, we can put it into, we call it survivability mode or transportation mode. So it 
reduces the draft greatly. Right, so then you're, it's more like a, 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 a ship rather than a great big thing with big legs. Completely, and also it would be through through transportation if we had to tow the device off site. Right. But also if there was going to be a storm with huge waves coming through site, we could tuck the legs up to, to reduce the wave load in there. Right. So also, presumably, then, this sort of technology is really suited to, to, to island communities. We've been able to tow the devices around as well. You can, you can have it in a smaller port that has smaller infrastructure um, and serviceable vessels. Right. It makes it a lot easier. I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. I just want to see loads of them. Yeah, so, 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 so do we. <laughs> do too. So do we, for sure. So Lisa, we're out in a tidal gap between some islands and it's so confusing because when you look at this installation, it really looks like that's moving. <laughs> no, nope, that is stationary that is just stationary. now. That's the tide that you're seeing right. flowing past it. Right. And it's only just started, so the t it will build up stronger than that. Yep, this is just the start of the tide. It'll get up to about four metres per second. When you look at that thing, it's just two big posts with some stuff on the top sticking out the sea. But there is a thing underneath the water. There's a there. tidal turbine underneath the water, which is right. generating electricity into the national grid as right. we speak. Um, this is a test rig, which the company Open Hydro used to test their turbine. So it allows them to raise the turbine in, out of the water, so when they need to do maintenance or switch a new turbine in, um, and it allows them to easily put the turbine into the water to test it and generate electricity. This test rig here is for the purposes of EMEC and for testing the turbine, and they've got a six metre turbine here. Uh, the ones that they're developing elsewhere across the world um, are 16 metres in diameter and they would be deployed on a gravity base on the seabed. Oh, I see. So they wouldn't use this system no. when they're actually installing them for use. This is just to test it. So when they're deployed elsewhere, you wouldn't see them from the surface at all. So that's the EMEX substation that you can see behind us here, right. which is what connects us into the national grid, yeah. so we can feed power back to the mainland of Scotland. Right. Today we have four different tidal turbines on site, um, two of which are visible, which you saw were the floating turbines behind us. Uh, one which is open hydro, one that's on the seabed yeah. here, and there's another turbine that's deployed on the seabed at the right, Fall of Hornet as well. See. You can't see it we at just all. Ha we just have to believe you <laughs> that yep. it's there. Not yeah. making it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So then that, that power is going under on cables to, to the substation yeah. there. So then... EMEC provides, we've got seven subsea cables here at the tidal test site, right. which feed into the substation. I'm sure you won't have an opinion about this, but do, do you feel that, that tidal turbines have a, have a stronger possibility of becoming widely used more than wave or is it really you, you can you not really judge between the two i would say tidal energy is further ahead in its development at the moment um, but in terms of the potential across the world wave energy is the one that has the most resource out there across right. the world we got a so lot of waves there's there's room for both technologies right. out there are we getting close to sort of genuine commercial deployment in around the world so this, this platform here behind us has been here for 10 years now right. So this company have been testing various iterations of their turbine and keep on bringing new ones back to test at EMEC whilst they go out and start looking at commercial developments across the world. It's quite early days for the industry where it's still in its infancy and that a lot of these technologies are first and gener second generation technologies. Um, and it will be uh, maybe a couple of decades before we really start to see this being built out. But this is this is the start of it. So EMEC was set up with a lot of public funding coming from the Scottish government and the UK government, as well as some European funding coming in as well. And it was that foresight coming from the public sector, which was really instrumental in getting EMEC set up here, right. um, getting this the infrastructure in place to allow technologies to test in real sea conditions. And that's been the instigator for a whole new industry to start to develop. And Orkney acts as a really good case study for those benefits that can come out of developing this industry. I'm almost surprised by the foresight of government funding that, you know, this was initially put in before there were really any tidal turbines. I mean, it was the, the notion that there might be or that technology might work to, to put these installations in. Because I mean, yeah. it's been here quite a while. I think, as you say, that, that foresight from government is so important in terms of instigating the innovation that's now taking place on site. Yeah. These are extremely pioneering machines that are being tested here in the UK. Yeah. And that's because of that foresight that came from government yeah. in the very early days. I mean, it kind of makes sense because we're an island nation with a lot of tides around us. It's sort of it's kind of obvious when you think about it in those terms. I mean, We're a maritime nation and that's what a lot of our past industries have been built on and this is a new industry that we can build on a lot of the skills that we already have 
build up a new industry around that. In particularly the oil and gas industry, which for decades has been putting big things in the sea to extract fossil fuels. I mean, in a sense, there's some similarities. There's some technological similarities with this, isn't there? There's definitely some transferable skills we can get from oil and gas and from onshore and offshore wind as well. We can take a lot of that learning, um, a lot of the learning from the shipbuilding days as well can right. come into this yeah, now. It's very obvious from looking at that, that there's a lot of water moving through this, yes. through this channel. So there's about half a billion tonnes of water can pass through the fall of Warness every hour at peak tide. Right. It's about four metres per second, or about eight knots. It's like running. Is it? Yeah. It's about <laughs> the speed of running, isn't it? Because it's very hard to tell. We're on, a, we're on a boat here that is actually having to work, even though we're not moving, just to keep level, isn't it? It's extraordinary. What but. surprises a lot of people when they see pictures of the boats being stationary or the platform there is this is all stationary in the water. Yeah. And it's the tide that's running past them. Yeah. We'd like to thank Lisa and Danny and all the amazing people of Orkney who showed us the groundbreaking and inspirational work that's happening on these beautiful Scottish islands. Please subscribe to Fully Charged and check out the Patreon link beneath this video. And if you have been, as always, thank you for watching.